Hello, I'm Richard with ev for You Custom Conversions. And in this episode, this video, we're going to talk about adapters and couplers. This is the motor adapter and coupler. We've talked about these in previous videos. Um, so this is going to, going to be all new information, but it, uh, we're going to talk about a little more specific uh, to this current project, which is our 1964 Mercedes 230SL. adapter coupler first off well in order to mate the electric motor to your existing transmission we need to adapt to that so different ways to do that this is a cast aluminum uh, adapter you can get billet ones uh, that's the type that we normally have made are it's a bill of aluminum either a one or two piece setup this is a one piece cast aluminum looks like a sand casting and then it's machined uh, to get the final finish uh, shape and dimension now an adapter is an important piece this has to be able to bolt to the motor. So the motor would bolt here at these four locations. And then it bolts to the bell housing at these locations. Now, what's critical is two things. One is center. So the motor shaft and the input shaft, the transmission, this all has to be centered dead on. The other important dimension is this dimension. This has to go in conjunction with the adapter and the motor shaft to give us that same dimension as we measured earlier when we removed the gasoline engine. Remember, we called that the magic number. And that was the distance from uh, here to the back side of the flywheel, which we're going to show you later in this video also. So this is the adapter. So that's going to adapt the motor to the bell housing. Now we also have to couple the motor to the input shaft. And we do that, we always retain the clutch. And so we have to have a coupler that's going to go from the motor shaft to the flywheel. So this piece allows us to mount to the motor shaft, the drive shaft of the motor, and then this mimics the end of the crankshaft where the flywheel will mount. Okay? Again, this is going to have you know a certain dimensional characteristics in order to 
make all that work. This one included the uh, uh, pilot bearing, which is nice. A lot of times we have to find one or make a bushing or something to work. So, back to the kind of specifics of this project, as you all remember, and that was that we ordered this for this project back in March. It is currently the end of July. This is the last week of July. We received this a week and a half ago. And on uh, initial inspection, we realized that the coupler was not correct. This fit, where it goes on the motor shaft, is a slip fit, and it's supposed to be an interference fit. That means that in order for this to go on the shaft, we would have to heat this up, install it on the shaft, as we showed in the previous video, and then when this cools down, it's locked on that shaft, okay? It's also got a keyway here, help keep it from spinning under torque. So, after waiting over three months to receive this, we get it and it's wrong. A week and a half later, they did send us a replacement. However, they didn't bother put the idler or the uh, pilot bearing in this one. We're going to have to remove it from that one and put it here. Nothing like getting the wrong part and then having a hassle factor to go along with it. Okay, so we haven't checked the replacement coupler yet to see if it's going to work. Um, so we're going to do that shortly. We're also going to show you the adapter. It doesn't fit exactly either. So we're going to show you that and talk about that. But first, Let's talk about adapters and couplers in general. There, there's basically three ways we can do this. In other words, you're going to need an adapter coupler if you're going to mate to an existing transmission. And that really is the easiest way to go. And that's one of the reasons why you know, uh, converters maintain, you know, retain the, the transmission. The other is that a lot of the motors that historically were available to us had RPM limitations and we needed that mechanical advantage uh, that the transmission provided. And we have a video that we did years ago in regards to uh, why do you use a transmission. So anyway, I'm not going to go into that anymore. But as far as the adapter coupler goes, there's three, three ways we can do this. One is you can make it yourself. Okay. Now, for that option, you've got to have the ability and the equipment to do that. Okay. So, there are some that can do that, and there are a lot that can't. So, here's another option. Have one made. Now, that's typically what we do. We have a mechanical engineer that we contract with. He does all the design, uh, you know, and engineering of the adapter coupler, makes up the uh, CAD drawings, which we then take to our local machine shop, and they then produce the adapter and coupler. There's a third. And that is, buy it off the shelf. So here's the motor that's going in that vehicle. This is the High Performance Electric Vehicle Systems AC35 times two. Here is the replacement coupler that we were sent and I can see right now 
Look at that. That's a slip fit. That one too is incorrect. I I'm telling you, I don't have anything positive to say at this point about this company. So here's what we chose to do. Buy it off the shelf. Here it is. Ford V8, the small block Ford. Small block Ford. So here's the part that caught our attention. In stock, ready for next day shipping. Adapters including hub and hardware are $825. In stock, ready for next day shipping. Well, I'm just giving you the facts, folks. It was over three months. You just saw the adapter or the, the coupler doesn't fit correctly. Let's go take a look at the, uh, the uh, adapter. All right, here's the adapter. It's just uh, stuck on the uh, bell housing. Well, what we have there's a pin here and here. And based on the drawings that they have on their website, so you know it's going to fit, they give you some distances and stuff, like from pen to pen, that kind of thing. All that matched up. Plus, this is a small block Ford V8 uh, bell housing. Here's a printout of what we got off the internet initially to make sure that what they were sending us was compatible and so they provide these dimensions which matched matched ours as well as we knew that we had a Ford small block V8 okay so we in good faith thought you know hey that's the one that's gonna work not so and of course here's the uh, coupler they call it a, a hub and so again everything looked like it should work they didn't give you this spec here so we just assumed and um, but you know we assumed that when it says that it's in stock and ships the next day that that would happen too so this seems to all fit from here to here, to this pin. Okay, we're missing a hole right here on the other side of the pin where a bolt goes through. This doesn't line up here. And these two down here don't line up. So anyway, what we need to know now is, you know, we can, uh, we can drill the hole uh, we'll check the distances and see if we can make those others, uh, you know, work. We've got enough material. This actually uh, has a little more material. Like this, this hole right here just goes into space. There's no bell housing behind it. So, uh, so in this case, we can probably make this adapter work if the critical dimensions are correct. And one of those critical dimensions is, is this input shaft centered here, so that when our motor's on here, is it centered with the motor shaft? So we're going to uh, check and see, using a straight line between these hole centers, we'll use a laser, and we'll see if that is indeed centered and that's one hurdle if it's centered good I think we can make things work if it's not it's the tosser the other issue is going to be this this thickness and so we're going to mount this on the motor mount the coupler mount the flywheel and check. So here's the motor with the coupler installed on it.
Okay. So now we're going to mount the adapter to the motor. Then we'll bolt the flywheel to the coupler and we'll check that magic number. Well, we've got some good news. That is the mounting holes seem to, to line up here. And, uh, we'll just draw this on. Well, I thought it was going to be an issue, but I wasn't sure. So I didn't say anything until we actually went to put it together. But what we have now is uh, the issue is that this sticks out further than this does. And this is a flat surface on the uh, flywheel. So this is going to make here, well, it won't even get close to here because it's hitting these bolt heads first. So first what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to take off those uh, split lock washers and see what uh, what that does. I don't think it's going to be enough. So I pulled out one of the uh, bolts and you can see that the head sticks out further than the flange does here. So no way that's going to work. So we would have to put a bevel in there, use a bevel headed uh, bolt, which is how ours are designed, our uh, built aluminum ones. We use a tapered bolt. So what I'm going to do is just going to pull these out and stick the flywheel on here and see if the magic number is uh, correct. And then we can know if we, if we need to make further modifications to this adapter plate. Okay, flywheel installed. We'll check the magic number in a second. Check this out. This is the clearance between the flywheel and the adapter. Pretty tight. You can check this out. You'll see that the flywheel has a heavy spot. <laughs> now we indexed the uh, clutch to the flywheel, so those two should be balanced together. So when the clutch is installed, we shouldn't see that. It should just uh, just spin without favoring any spot in the downward location. So you can see this mark on the flywheel. It should end up in that same spot every time if it's a weight issue like I think it is. So anyway, the next thing to do now is to check the magic number. You can remember we did that when we removed the, uh, there it goes. When we removed the, uh, the engine, we checked it on this stock internal combustion engine. There it is, as I suspected. So anyway, uh, let's check that magic number. Okay, from our original engine removal video, you remember we had a 1.061 magic number. So we're going to do that. I set it at, at that spec. You know, you can do this another way. I'm just wanting to know if this is, is going to be close or not. So, I put it up here and I can see that it's not close. Um, do it at an angle where the camera can see better. Let me, let me do it by hand here. Look at that.
we could uh, slide the um, adapter out, but it's not designed to work that way. It's designed to be seated all the way down, or the coupler, I mean. And so, yeah, huge, unbelievable. So let me measure and see what it actually is. Sure, we're zeroed out here. Okay. Lock it down. Can you see that? It's point nine four five. Here's the motor just set in the uh, engine bay with uh, the adapter attached. We don't have the flywheel or the clutch installed right now. Uh, what we did is we installed the adapter by itself onto the um, bell housing and checked with a laser that uh, does a cross pattern to make sure that uh, our bolt holes on the uh, adapter lined up with the uh, uh, input shaft on the transmission so that everything was in alignment. That looked true, thankfully. Because what that's gonna allow us to do now is we're gonna take this adapter, we're gonna have to machine it so what we're going to do is we're going to have this machined um, and that will then um, move the motor a little bit closer which will put that greater distance that we needed. We had, so by doing that, that will give us that uh, magic number spec that we need and then the holes that we're missing and everything, like uh, down here, there's a hole missing and so forth. We're going to drill those. Stuck this in here now because uh, the machine shop can't take this immediately. So what we're going to do is we're going to design our motor mounts. We can get all of our readings and measurements and everything for the motor mounts so we can design the motor mounts. And then once the motor mounts are uh, built, um, we're going to incorporate our battery rack in the front here. So that was the whole sequential thing. Until we knew exactly where this was going to sit, we couldn't do the rest of it. And uh, because this is going to be so tight between here, the batteries and the hood, uh, we're talking fractions of an inch. And so we wanted to make sure that this all fit exactly the way we thought it would. And our mock-ups, it was just, we felt it was too close to, to, to make the decision. So we wanted to wait till we had all this uh, physically in place. So we're now at that point where we're gonna have this physically in place and that's going to allow us to move forward on a couple different fronts. We'll be able to, uh, um, get the motor mounts going. Once that gets going, uh, we can get this over to the machine shop and uh, have this machined uh, and have the holes uh, tapered and, um, and have the coupler done. And so then we can start working on, you know, once that's done and secured and measured, then we can start working on our battery racks. Once we have this one engineered, then we can start doing the back one also. And so, like I said, the original desire was to have 30 cells in front, 20 in the rear. But with our mock-ups, we couldn't get more than 26 up here, and that meant we'd have to put 24 in the rear. And that just was a weight distribution uh, issue uh, that I, I didn't think was ideal. So we're gonna try to do it. Now that we have it in, we can get 
exact measurements and make this thing work. So excited to finally be able to start making forward progress on this project. But um, uh, it was a painful lesson in deferring uh, these parts to somebody else and uh, they dropped the ball and we were um, too generous with uh, putting up with all the excuses and the time delays and, uh, and three months, uh, over three months have burned by. Totally not acceptable and uh, so this is not our vehicle, this is the customer's, so we're kind of stuck in the middle, not a position I like being in. So we are going to take the reins and make this happen. So hope you'll continue to follow this uh, project. Uh, hopefully the next video we can have uh, uh, some motor mount design uh, to share with you um, and perhaps even beyond that. So as always, I thank you for watching and uh, until we see you again, enjoy the drive.